Hi boys and girls. Well, we know this week is gonna be nocturnal animals, but I really wanted to share this book with you. The week before our long break began, if you remember, we were doing pond life, so you got to make different crafts. You made the frog, you made the dragonfly, and that's the week that I was taking friends one by one, and we were getting ready for conferences and for the uh, report cards, so Mrs. Rule was doing activities with you with our letters and with our numbers, and our friend, Miss Myers, took care of reading the books and doing the crafts, and she did a lovely job. So even though it's nocturnal week, and I do have nocturnal books that'll come up on Wednesday and Friday, I really want to share this with you. And it's called Tale of a Tadpole. And on the title page, we're going to find out that Karen Wallace wrote this book. And if you notice, it's going to be done with photographs, which we know is always fun. The tale of a tadpole begins in a pond. Mother Frog lays her eggs next to a lily pad. Each tiny egg is wrapped in clear jelly. Now, if you look at this, you can see the eggs and the little black dots there. And then they do a close-up where there's the jelly around the eggs. Inside the jelly, the eggs grow into tadpoles. They wriggle like worms. They push through the jelly and swim in the water. They breathe through gills just like fishes. So you can see on this page, here they are still inside the jelly. And over here, they're pushing out of there. And look at that close-up of the gills. That's pretty neat. Well, they look huge right there, but they're so tiny when you really see them in the pond. Many other animals live in the pond. Shiny goldfish and sticklebacks and great diving beetles. They chase the young tadpoles. So look at these guys. They're like yummy dinner. Now you get a better idea of how tiny they really are. A stickleback feels hungry. He opens his mouth wide. The little gray tadpoles wriggle their tails and swim away through the water. Ooh, that was a close one. You can see that stickleback coming in. There he is. A great diving beetle feels hungry too. His hairy back legs beat through the water. The tadpoles escape and hide in the weeds. So you can see that was a great idea because they're, it's like they're camouflaged there. And here comes Buddy Boy, the giant, what's it called? The great diving beetle. Soon, a tadpole grows legs with tiny webbed toes. Webbed toes are like flippers. They help the small tadpole push through the water. Here he goes. Oh, and there's a close-up of those webbed toes. You know what I just realized? Did I show you the close-up? Oh, they didn't do a close-up on that page. All right. He grows arms with long, skinny fingers. He nibbles on plants and gobbles green pondweed. So here he is, and then here's our close-up of his fingers. Half tadpole, half frog, he rests in the sunshine. His tail is shrinking. It gets smaller and smaller. And I love this picture because you can see here, look how long that tail is. And then they do a close-up of the tail. And you can see on this one, the tail is getting smaller. And when you look over here, you don't see a tail at all. The 
The new little frog sits on a lily pad. His legs are strong now. He can breathe through his nostrils. His skin is dotted with tiny gold spots. So here he is on his lily pad, and here's the close up of his nostrils. Now remember, nostrils are the little holes that are at the tip of our nose, and that's how we breathe. Our air comes through our, our nostrils. You know what I think's fun about this page is he looks like he's riding in a boat, a lily pad boat. Frogs must keep their skin slimy. He hops back in the pond and swims for a while. Then he climbs onto a log. Another frog comes up and sits down beside him. So here he is coming on up and then he's got company. Now full grown, he dives through the water. He's not afraid of the stickleback. He swims past the beetle. Now, no wonder he's not afraid. Look how big he is. He's not a little tadpole anymore. In the pond, he watches and waits. What does he see with his round, beady eye? A fly lands above him. He creeps closer and closer. So here's a close-up of the eye. And then here he is thinking, mmm, that fly looks delicious. Might have to get him. The golden skinned frog. You know what happened? I think I skipped the page. There we go. But a big frog jumps up. It snatches the fly with its long, sticky tongue. The frog misses his meal. Next time, he'll be faster. And here's a close-up of the tongue. And their tongues are sticky, and boy, that's a wonderful picture there. You can see this frog just got there faster. Our little guy's still thinking about it. The golden-skinned frog chases a dragonfly. It lands on a lily pad. Under the lily pad are hundreds of frogs' eggs. Inside each egg, a tadpole is growing. Each tadpole will grow into a golden-skinned frog. Wow. So here's our frog. And you can see the dragonfly up here on the lily pad. And look at that below there. All of those frog eggs that you wouldn't even realize were there. And on this last page, they go over the pictures and the words that they had in boxes. So you have jelly, gills, webbed toes, fingers, tail, nostril, eye, and tongue. And that was called Tale of a Tadpole. Now, this was real information about frogs. Um, this was not fiction. Remember, fiction is when somebody makes up the story and it doesn't have real information or not all real information, but this is informational. It gives us real information. Boys and girls, so this week we're doing letter K and mom and dad, I will send any types of worksheets that we would do. I'll send that through email to you and you choose what you would like to do. Um, we had some requests by parents that they would like to have some of the worksheets. So I have a mix, and I, I won't send all at once. I'll do it a little bit. So one of the things we always do during the week is practice 
K writing our letter. So this week, of course, is K. And with the boys and girls, I know you won't have the grid, and that's fine, but um, we always picked three colors. They would trace it, and then they would choose another color, and then they would choose a third color to trace the letter. Just make sure, please, that they're starting at the top when they do their letters, and when they do the slanted line, they can come over and down. But you'll see that through the week, and I will email that to you. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.